I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on limits. We'll now discuss limits of trigonometric functions. So we'll take a few examples based on complexity. I've grouped them into different levels. So we'll calling them as limit of trigonometric functions one, right? So here we have three examples. You need to find limit when x approaches zero for sine mx over sine nx, limit when x approaches zero for tan x minus sine x over sine cube x, limit when x approaches zero for sine 2x plus sine 6x divided by sine 5x minus sine 3x. What you need to remember basically is uh, the basic limits, which is limit when x approaches zero for sine x over x is equal to one. And when it comes to uh, question like part C, you may like to remember some trigonometric identities or formulas, I say. So we are given sum and difference. So it is a good idea to remember uh, from sum to product form. We also call it in case sum or difference, it doesn't matter. Similar formula to product form. So for your convenience, I'll provide the formulas right here. So that really helps you to solve these questions. So if it is sine alpha plus sine beta, then you could write this as two times sine alpha plus beta by two times cos alpha minus beta by two. If it is negative here, that is to say, if we have sine alpha minus sine beta, in that case, there is a slight change in the formula. Instead of sine, we write cos alpha plus beta divided by two times sine alpha minus beta divided by two, correct? So these formulas will help you to really get solution for these limits question. So let's begin with part A. The strategy to evaluate the limit when x approaches zero for sine mx over sine nx is to rewrite this expression and utilize our knowledge that limit when x approaches zero for sine x over x is equal to one. So we have to get that form somehow. Perfect. So let's look into this solution, keeping this in mind. So we could write this as limit x approaches zero. Now sine mx is in the numerator. So we write sine mx. Now to get that kind of a form, what I could do here is multiply and divide by mx, right? I could do that because I want like, the whole argument to be here, right? So what we do here is we multiply by mx and also divide by mx. Similarly, in the denominator, which is sine of nx, we'll multiply and divide by nx. Correct? That is the first step. Now see what happens. We could write this as limit x approaches zero. Now mx, x, uh, let me rewrite, then we'll rearrange. Okay, so it becomes mx. I'm just repositioning for the sake of simplicity. This step is not really required. This is an additional step, only for clarity. Okay, now this gives you a very familiar look. And what you could do here is that you could cancel these x's. Is it okay? M and N are constants. Perfect, M and N are constants. And therefore, I could write this as M over N. Perfect. Now we'll apply the laws of limit. So the quotients of limits now could be written like this. Okay, we write here limit. Uh, 
uh, sine of mx over mx and limit x approaches 0 of course sine of nx approaches over nx right so that's how we could do it okay let me rewrite this on the right side we have a lot of space here so what i'm trying to say here is that we get this as equals to ratio of m and n and we are multiplying this with limit of sine mx over mx where x approaches 0 divided by limit x approaching 0 for sine nx over nx right now what is this for both it is 1 right so what we get here is m over n and that is 1 over 1 correct so basically we get m over n as our answer so the solution here is m over n so I hope that is absolutely clear, right? Now let's take up the next example. We'll evaluate limit as x approaches zero for tan x minus sine x over sine cube x. Now here, we'll like to simplify the trigonometric expression. That's the whole idea. So the key is to simplify the whole expression. So we could write this as limit x approaches zero tan is sine over cos. So we'll write sine x over cos x minus sine x over sine cube x. Okay. We can take cos x as common denominator. So we can write this as limit x approaches 0. So we get sine x minus sine x this goes there cos x over cos x everything over sine cube x okay now bringing sine cos x in the denominator simple steps to simplify this trigonometric expression in the numerator we can take sine x common we get 1 minus cos x and in the denominator, we get cos x times sine cube x. Okay, so we could now cancel sine x, simplify this part. So we get this as sine square x, correct? Okay, so we get limit x approaches 0. And numerator now is 1 minus cos x. And the denominator, we have cos x times sine square x. Sine square x can be written as 1 minus cos square x. So we could write this as limit x approach 0, 1 minus cos x over cos x times 1 minus cos square x. Now this can be further factored, so we could write this as limit x approaches 0, 1 minus cos x over cos x times 1 minus cos x times 1 plus cos x. So we have a common factor in numerator and denominator, cancelling that we have now a term where we can substitute 0, right? Because earlier, if I substitute 0 for cos x, it is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So this is indeterminate form. Sine of 0 is also 0, right? So basically, it's an indeterminate form. And therefore, we have to do all this. Now, we have got rid of the common factor from numerator and denominator. That was the key. So what we get now is just limit x approaches 0 for 1 over cos x times 1 plus cos x. Correct? Now in this expression, we can now substitute 0 and we know cos of 0 is 1. So it is 1 times 1 plus 1. So we get 1 over 
1 times 1 plus 1, right? So which is half. So that is the, the answer, right? So since we know that cos of 0 is 1, correct? So that helps us to get the answer. This was indeterminate form 0 over 0. That means we had a common factor. So we got this common factor removed. Once we do that, we can substitute 0 and get the answer. So I hope this strategy is absolutely clear. So let's move on and take the next example now. Now we are almost at the end. Here is the last example. We need to find limit as x approaches 0 for sine 2x plus sine 6x divided by sine 5x minus sine 3x. We are going to use the formula which is uh, sum or difference to product. Right, so that's a formula which we are going to use to simplify the given expression. So we could write this as limit x approaches 0. So applying this formula in the numerator first, we get twice sine of sum of these two, which is 2x plus 6x divided by 2 times cos difference of these two, 2x minus 6x divided by 2 divided by 2 times now here it is difference to sum I mean product so we'll write this as cos of sum of these two 5x plus 3x divided by 2 times sine difference of these two 5x minus 3x divided by 2 okay. now uh, limit x approaches 0 it's a good idea to cancel 2. Simplify as you move forward. That's the strategy. So here we get sine of 8 over 2 is 4, 4x, cos of minus, okay, minus uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2x, divided by cos of 4x, sine of 2 over 2, 1. So sine of x. That's what we get. Now you know cos of minus x is cos x. So let me rewrite that part. Plus, we are looking for something of this form. That is, we know that limit theta approaches 0 for sine theta over theta is 1. So we have to write this as 4x over 4x. So the idea is to rewrite this in that form. So I hope the strategies are clear. That helps you to solve many similar questions. So we'll multiply by 4x and also divide by 4x in the numerator. So we have sine 4x here times, now that could be written as cos 2x. Why? Because cos of, I mean, cos of minus theta is cos theta, correct? So cos of minus theta is cos theta. It's an even function. So we write like this. Here we have cos 4x times, again, we need x in the denominator. So let me multiply and divide by x. So I hope this step is absolutely clear. It's a very critical step. Now, we could rewrite this as limit x approaches 0 for, so here we have a factor which is sine 4x over 4x. Now, this 4x will write separately, okay. Okay, let me write introduce here. So, we have already taken this 4x in. We are left with that 4x. Let me introduce it here, 4x, okay. Then we have cos 2x over cos 4x. So I'm writing this x first times cos 4x times sin x over x. Correct? Now we could cancel these x's. 
So what we get here is four times limits, let's apply the laws. We get limit x approaches 0 for sine 4x over 4x times limit x approaches 0 for cos 2x divided by limit x approaches 0 for cos 4x limit x approaches 0 for sin x over x correct now all these limits individually are 1 so these limits are 1 correct this is 1 this is also 1 so if I substitute 0 here, we get cos 0, which is 1. And that's the formula, which is 1. So what we get here is 1 times 4. So the answer is 4. Correct? So this limit is 4 for us. So I hope you understand how to evaluate limits when we are given trigonometric functions. Key here is to remember trigonometric formulas and also review how to simplify these trigonometric expressions that will be a key to solve all the questions related to limits of trigonometric functions now in my second list of videos we'll go higher level and take a few complicated trigonometric limits i hope that makes sense feel free to write your comments and share your views if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best